how's it going YouTube? SpecM Auto is back and today we are reviewing this 2008 Honda Civic and I am going to tell you how this car is. Let's get started. It's a nice little car. I've had this car for a year and a half now. This is my personal car. This is my daily driver. It's accumulated over 20,000 miles in a matter of a year and a couple months. It's been nothing but good. And in case anybody hasn't noticed yet, this is a hybrid model. So yes, it's the slow model. It's the model that's not worth talking about, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. I did a lot of things to this car since I bought it. It's gotten serviced through the Honda dealership. It's gotten a lot of services done, including oil, obviously. It's got a new air filter. It's got a new cabin air filter. It's got LED lights in some areas, like the uh, brake lights and the... Uh, angel eye headlights up front um, I got some stupid stickers put on here I have uh, these aftermarket spec D um, spec D taillights here these are the uh, euro version and then I also have spec D headlights up front which I'm about to show you right now so I'll go ahead and take you guys up to the front And here you'll see my aftermarket headlights I got put in here. These are also the Spec D brand. I just got I got those all in uh, July or January 2019, so they're not even a year old yet. I'll go ahead and I'll show you guys the inside here in a moment. All right, this is the interior. It's a nasty tan one. And, you know, it shows all the dirt and all the fun shit that goes on in here. I try to keep it as clean as possible, but not all the stains can ever come out all the way. I'll show you guys real quick. And even though this is a hybrid with a faulty battery, it still starts up every single time. And yes, my oil is about due. I got an oil change appointment with Honda next Friday. Next Friday. See, it starts right up every time. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Everything works as it should. All the windows work. I got window over here, window there, window in the back, and then window there. All my windows work. I got the uh, digital automatic air conditioning. Don't want AC on though. So it's all digital. You can turn the knob to do the, temp, the fan speed, temperature. I want to keep it on 70 though. Then you can change the mode. So you can put it on whatever mode that you want. Right now I'll put it on there because it's a little cold outside. Radio works, aux works, CD player works, everything works. Got plenty of room in here for how small this car is it ain't, it ain't bad at all it's got this little nifty cup holder hiding place I know my interior is messy it needs cleaned haven't had the time because I've been busy at work but all this goes in and out good I got storage here storage up there got little Colby holes here and here got storage in all four door panels mirrors in here got mirrors there I have LED map lights installed and I also have this blue LED uh, dome light here which looks really really cool at night I get compliments on that constantly here's my back seat the back seats are very very clean because nobody ever sits back here but you can see how roomy this car is for how small it is here I'll just come right in here there ain't a whole lot of room with this part right here but if it was all like this that'd be kind of nice but you can see I have a decent amount of room for what I have then I got some headroom here like I'd say like an inch or so it's not all that bad and then I also want to show you guys the wax that I use for my car every time I wash it. 
every single time I wash this car, I use this ceramic hybrid wax from Meguiar's. I trust that brand with my life. Um, like anything detailing stuff, Meguiar's is the brand to get. That's just my personal opinion. Any, you know, favoritism and stuff, because I do use another brand called, uh, I think it's Black Magic. I do the Black Magic Tire Shine. That's the stuff I usually use for my tires. I'll give you guys one more good look at my car. And these, uh, this specific generation of Civics are usually notorious for paint fade. Like all the clear coat on the top and everything just peels off and it just looks like complete shit. This car has no paint peel whatsoever. The paint is almost pristine, minus a few flaws, obviously, from age. So I gotta show you guys the top of my hood. You can see a reflection of everything. Even on the roof. It's all clean. 100% clean. So there is no fade, no nothing on this car. Trunk lid is good. The only paint fade I'm getting at all on this entire vehicle it's just this little bit on this plastic spoiler here see this plastic spoiler has a little bit of fade get you guys at a good angle so you can see it you can see like this very minor fading going on but other than that trunk lid itself is great the body is amazing look at that you can see the uh Reflection of the trees and everything in the car the whole vehicle is pretty much like a mirror Because I am religious with keeping this car clean and keeping it maintained You can even see over here on this side. It's just absolutely amazing See again with this side same story you can just see the reflection of everything in here they, uh, then you got the shiny brand new headlights. I got that uh, emblem there painted blue. The back one used to be blue, but it peeled off for some reason, so now it's black. <clears throat> I got the little JDM Rising Sun sticker on the gas tank lid there. Tail lights are great. I got some stickers here. There's my tail lights. You guys get a good look at my tail. Sorry about that, guys. My camera cut out. But anyway, you guys can get a good look at my tail lights real quick. You see, those are pretty much brand new as well. Um, the Civic emblem here fell off a while back. Um, I'm gonna plan on using some goo gone and stuff to get rid of that residue so it's just gonna be all gray and shiny like the rest of the paint. For a car that has almost 200,000 miles within its 11 year lifespan, still running as smoothly and quiet as this, that is just, that that's a great milestone in my opinion. There are some of these uh, models of Civics that are known to make it to a million miles. <laughs> I'm not sure if mine will ever make it to a million, but I guess we'll uh, take it out on the road and I'll show you guys how it drives and everything. Alright guys, here's the drive. I'll tell you guys all about it. Here we go. So the car itself drives really smooth, despite being 11 years old, almost 12 years old, and approaching, let's see how many miles, 194,000 miles. This thing still rides as smooth as a, as a brand new 2019 Civic. I knew this for a fact because my best friend has a 2019 Civic, and he, he even he said that my car rides just as smooth as his, and that is just shocking. That right there right away tells you the quality of Hondas over time. 
I'm not even trying to be like one of those little Honda boys. I know but my car probably looks like it a little bit, but you gotta got you guys gotta know that I did most of the stickers just for shits and giggles. You know what I'm saying? I did it for fun. I didn't do it to be a ricer. If people call me a ricer, then that's fine. I really don't care because this car is just a Civic. It's just a hybrid. Now, gas mileage with the uh, hybrid models not like all, all that great at all because it's because of the battery deterioration problem that these cars are known to have. Um, these batteries are only going to last like maybe up to 10 to 12 years before completely dying. Um, for a battery in a hybrid of this age, being as deteriorated as it is and how often I drive it year round, this car still gets over 33 miles a gallon on average, which is pretty much about what my friend's 2019 Civic gets. And it's not even a hybrid, it's just a regular gas LX model Civic. Now, acceleration in this car kind of sucks because right now I'm doing 38. When I get around this corner, I'm going to start speeding up some and I'm going to I'm going to tell you guys, you know, how slow this thing gets when you, you want to accelerate. This thing wants to take its sweet time at accelerating. I just don't want to do it around this corner soon. I'm going to go two seconds here because there's a pretty sharp corner. And this thing has a CVT transmission, so you'll never ever feel this car shifting. So when it when you're like putting it to the floor, you don't hear it rev or not. The, the engine just goes. It just it stays up in the revs. It doesn't do nothing. It sounds it sounds like shit. It sounds stupid, and it feels stupid because you don't feel the car shifting. That's the only thing I don't like about the CVT transmission is that you you can't feel the car. It's actually a, um, a highway up here, so I'll, I'll show you guys the acceleration thing up here. Let me get up to this uh, light. It's probably going to be a minute, so I'm going to see if I can just turn right and go down this highway the other way. Because it's going to be forever for this light. Never mind, I can't turn because this car is already sitting here, so I guess I'm just got to wait. Sometimes you just can't win. Just the way life is, you know. And that side goes first. And I hope this stop sign triggers that light. This is a really, really weird intersection. Now you guys are about to see how horrendous the acceleration in this car is. This is going to be the pedal to the floor. Now we're up to 62. See, it wasn't that bad this time, but sometimes, like, say you're at a stop sign and you're trying to go up you know, up a small incline, or even just on flat land. Sometimes you like, you're trying to put the pedal to the floor because the car is so fucking slow. It just takes forever for it to go up. Like, you could have your foot to the floor and the speedometer would go three, four, six, seven, nine. I'm like, what the, what the heck, God? What the hell? What the heck? That is the thing I hate the most about this car, is the really slow acceleration. Other than that, the reliability is amazing. The, uh, the styling is awesome. My friend always says it looks like a spaceship and he doesn't like the look of it, but I, I think it's cool. I like the unique thing. My absolute favorite thing about the interior of this car is the gauge cluster. The way the speedometer is, it's digital, so it's just digital numbers, You're not watching a up. It has specific numbers, 44, 45, 46. It shows you the specific number, which is great. I love it. And it's right there, right? It's that, that two-tier style that I love. 
because with this style, you don't have to look down in between your steering wheel here to look at your speed. You just look, glance right down and your speed's right there. And that's fantastic. I like that. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it in this video. If not, I can make another little clip showing it to you guys. But you can push this little button. It says MPH KM slash H. You can hold that button down. And it'll switch to kilometers per hour. And your mileage will switch to kilometers. So your odometer now has the kilometers on it. And so does your speedometer. So instead of miles per hour, it's saying kilometers an hour. And your gauge cluster down here says, you know, 312,235 kilometers. It sounds like a lot, but really it's not because if you go back to miles, it's 193,934 miles. So that's not too bad. And the thing that it takes a lot of time to get used to depending on how you are as a person this car has a feature called auto stop since it's a hybrid it's designed to help you save gas any chance you get so say you're at a red light in town like this or if you're at a stop sign or whatever it'll automatically turn itself off and a little green light will flash saying auto stop and when the light turns green and you let off the brake pedal it'll automatically pop itself back on and you can take off. I don't know if it'll do it because my thing is on. Give me a second. I'm going to see if it does it. It appears it's not doing it right now. Hmm. I'll try to drive up to the next few lights to show you guys how it works. If not, like I said, I'll just do another little clip and I'll just like show you guys that little clip. If It all just depends on how it all works out with the camera. Yeah, see, this light up here is turning red, so I'll have to sit in this light, so it might do it. And it only does it if your uh, IMA battery pack, which is the hybrid battery in the car, is full or near full. So let's see at this stop if it'll do it. You might hear the car kick off. Yeah, right now, see? The car is not running. It's it's at zero RPMs there. There's a little green light flashing. It's saying auto stop. Let me go ahead and show you guys real quick. This is This is the auto stop feature. And when you let off the brake, it'll come back on so that's really cool all right guys and that's that so now here's the final question what is my opinion of this car and I'm gonna be as non-biased as possible because this is my personal car but I am gonna say that I do hate it and I love it at the same time the whole ownership of me and this car being together in the year and a half that I had it was literally a love-hate relationship. There's a lot of things I love about this car, and there's a lot of things I hate about this car. And the thing I do hate about the car is obviously the whole hybrid bullcrap. I hate it. I straight up hate it. I If I would have known about the stuff these hybrids are known to have problems with... I wouldn't have bought this car. But at the time, I didn't know anything about hybrids. Like, I'm a pretty mechanically inclined dude. But I don't know anything about hybrids. I don't know anything about electrical. I don't know anything about stuff like that. You know, computers, f electrical, hybrid stuff. I don't know anything about that. I, I don't like it. I just got this car... Because I've always wanted a Civic of this body style. This generation of the Civic is my favorite generation of them all. I, lo I like the uh, newer ones, like the 9th gens and the 10th gens. I like those too. I might actually be getting a 10th gen here in the next year or so, depending on what happens. But until then, I'm going to be driving this guy till 
probably until it dies or until I trade it in or something. <laughs> but my, you know, the final thoughts of this, I hate it and I love it at the same time. It's a reliable car. I've driven it all over the state several times. I live in Ohio, in case none of you guys know. I've driven down to Cincinnati. I've driven to Columbus. Actually, I drive to Columbus daily because I work up there. I've driven to Sandusky multiple times. I've driven to Cleveland two times. I've driven all over Ohio. Oh, just about every corner. You got Cleveland. You got Sandusky. You got Cincinnati. I've been pretty much all over the state in this car, and this car has done me wonderfully. The one major thing I've ever had happen with this car was that um, CV axle broke on me. As a matter of fact, it happened right after I washed this car before. It was back in June, I think. So, I heard clunk, 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 and my car would not move anymore. It would just fly up in revs and it would not want to move so i had to throw my hazards on i pulled over i saw one of the little rubber boots that go on there laying in the road it was kind of like rolling down the road a little bit it's kind of funny but that uh that repair bill wasn't that funny luckily i have a uh, AAA membership so i was able to call AAA, and they were able to get me uh towed back home then I call the local shop that I usually take my car to for major stuff like that. Because my mom goes to that local shop too. Um, I got my CV axle fixed and stuff. And now it's as good as new. Runs and drives just as good as before. No problems. I think I'm going to have to replace... <laughs> this is stupid because... I know when you replace a CV axle you're supposed to usually replace both. But at the time I did it kind of cheap. And I only got the one side fixed. The other side's still original. I feel like I'm going to have to replace the driver's side one soon. Because I do feel a little, a little bit of a shimmy on this side once in a while. So I got to deal with that. It's just... It's a lot of work. And there's a lot of maintenance stuff I got to get done with this car too. I wanted to get the transmission fluid done. And I also wanted to get the coolant done before winter. But it already snowed once where I'm at. So, I don't know. Maybe if I make a good enough money, I'll go ahead and just catch up on all my maintenance stuff. I mean, I, I'm usually very religious with my fluids and stuff. As long as my fluids are filled and my fluids appear clean, that's great for me. I gotta get my oil change done. Like I said earlier, I got, I'm got i getting that done next week. Every time I start the car up now, it makes that stupid little light come up that tells me that my oil life's at 15% to remind me every time I start the car which is kind of dreadful when I can't take my car in the Honda today but they go by appointments only I can't just walk in there and be like yeah give me give me an oil change please so there's that um so that's pretty cool um I'm gonna go ahead and head out um, I, I did want to film my other car today too, for another review type of video, but sometimes things don't work out the way you want them to, so I might do that tomorrow. So, I might upload that one sometime next week, or this coming week, or whatever. Um, but thank you guys for tuning in to Spec M Auto. Please like, share, subscribe. Share with all your friends. You don't even have to like the video. Share the video with your friends and family. Tag them on every social media platform you can think of. And smash that subscribe button. Smash the bell button so you know when I upload every video that I'm uploading. That is how a great channel grows. And I look forward to keep bringing you guys more content. Thank you guys and I'll see you guys next time.